Bang glorious bang off. Knowledge ball. Yeah. United Front. Tell it. What you want, what you want, what you want. To the knowledge radio. We in here. What Yo. you got? Dot. Work hard as a slave to one day be your savior. The wave Ooh. unwavering. This is a labor of love, rise with a purpose every day, invigorated. If we were on TV, we'd be ten times syndicated. If we waited for validation of paycheck or accolades, we'd be starved, already lost, or ran away. But when you're square solid and you're circle too, you don't need a place for silence. The concept is conquered through. Media, not areas of people, activity, a mix that don't lose ethnicity, tightness that don't lose elasticity. Explicitly, this isn't where we give the novice regard. Nah, this is where knowledge is born. Last time that I checked, I'm undefeated Ooh. Deliver edicts, can't resist When the gods build and manifest freedom When lines get crossed, they may push a loss Cause they get handed a check We kick yeah. your can and cancel Your cancerous gestures A prophet vision, precision The prescription for the sickness Is to inoculate your fate with the winning Arrogant beginnings turn to humble endings And you yeah. with KBA is a win-win 1K, 1K Black power, black power, black power, wartime, all of the African retribution, revolutionary greeting in the spirit of African retributionary warrior honor. We here on this Divine Warrior Wednesday to pay homage and owe to our beloved African warrior ancestor, Jonathan Jackson, the man child of the African retributionary. So in that spirit, in that lane, uh, in that vein, we are a symbol. And we see this symbol, this main state, this staple etched in our African retributionary mind of how far we will go for our brother, for our sister, for our mother, for our father, for our loved ones in self-defense. In the spirit of African retributionary love and empowerment, in the spirit of African insurrectionhood, our duty and responsibility is to celebrate and give honor to our warriors daily. In our relationship to ancestralhood, in that spirit of revolutionary power, retribute is a requirement. Retribute is a requirement in a territoristic environment. We retribute, meaning we pay tribute again. Our offering for the slaying of our ancestors is retribution. It's get back. It's justice. In our culture, justice is your penalty or reward depending upon your ways and actions. So if your ways and actions are for the devastation of our people, will meet your devastation with a more deadlier counter-territoristic force called retribution. So Jonathan Jackson was a man-child who was politicized, who was trained in hundreds of methodologies to kill a man. 
his mind at 17. 17. Could have been preoccupied with everything else and would have every license or excuse to just be child, to just be a teenager, to just be a brother, to just be a son. He could not have peace knowing that his brother was incarcerated, that his brother was a prisoner of war, that his brother was in captivity. We have brothers and sisters and mothers and cousins and family members that we claim we love further behind enemy lines and we disassociate with them. We disavow any knowledge of their existence. So in the spirit of African retributionary hood of Jonathan, he could not rest. He cannot be free while his brother was in captivity. Do you look at your brother in that same fashion? Do we look at our sister in the same fashion? I just want to read something real quick. This is so good for my soul. If anybody knows my name on Facebook, it's Jonathan Jackson. And this is why. This is why. So let me just get it real quick. Let me get it real quick. One second. It says, my dear only surviving son, I went to Mount Vernon, August 7, 1971, to visit the gravesite of my heart. Your keepers murdered in cold disregard for life. His grave was supposed to be behind your grandfathers and grandmothers, but I couldn't find it. There was no marker, just mowed grass. The story of our past, I sent the keeper a blank check for a headstone and two extra sights. Blood in my eye. Imagine going to visit your loved one at their gravesite and there was no marking for them. How many unmarked graves ancestrally for the warriors from amongst us, never to be identified again. Understand this same spirit that existed in this youth, existed in the youth who transitioned before him. So Jonathan Jackson is a people. Jonathan Jackson is Lil Bobby Hutton two years before that. 17 years old, killed two days after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, Lord Bobby Hutton, chose his people, just as Jonathan chose his people, who was killed in defense of his brother. Lord Bobby Hutton was killed in defense of his brothers and his sisters. This says blood in my eye. Where's the blood in your eye? For your brothers and your sisters as they're being killed, as they're being miseducated, as their children are being killed and miseducated, as their 
mental, emotional, and psychological being is being raped and killed. How can you be nationalistic? How can you be nationalistic when the enemies of your nation are killing your nation, killing your children, killing your women? And you as an African man stand there with your arms folded like that's their business. Mentally, emotionally, psychologically. I guess I even got to add virtually. Even got to add virtually. Let me read Jonathan real quick. Jonathan himself wrote, People have said that I am obsessed with my brother's case and the movement in general. People have said, that I am obsessed with my brother's case and the movement in general. This is the conversation that they're having with this 17-year-old man-child. This man-child of African retribution. They know him. They seen his commitment to discipline, to training, to study, to be a tactician, and it would come to him after witnessing what happened to his brother and told him, yo, you got to chill, son. You obsessing too much after his brother was taken from him. People have said, I'm obsessed with my brother's case and the movement in general. This was one and the same in his mind. A singular point of focus that led to this great image that you see right here. This is the reason why there are metal detectors in the courtroom today. This is the reason. This is the reason. A person that was close to me once said that my life was too wrapped up in my brother's case and I wasn't cheerful enough for her. I need y'all to listen to that. A person that was close to me was close to me, was close to me. once said that my life was too wrapped up in my brother's case and I wasn't cheerful enough for her. It is true. I don't laugh very much anymore. I have but one question to all you people and people that think like you. Yeah, one question. One question. To ask all you people and people that think like you, what would you do if it was your brother? That was his question. That was his question. That was Nat Turner's question. That was Denmark Vesey's question. That was Harriet Tubman's question. That was Queen and Zinga's question. That was all of our African mm -hmm. liberation forces known and unknowns question. What would you do if it was your brother? You would be able to sit around 
and watch these things happen externally and say that's them. You could divorce your connection to someone who looks like you and say that's them, not us. That's them. So just as much as Jonathan obsessed about his brother, he obsessed about our movement in totality. What would you do if it was your brother? He asked the question. And he gave the answer. You see the answer on the screen. This is what he did because it was his brother. He did not go down there for his brother alone. He went down there for all of his brothers and his sisters. His son was born, never to know his father, nor his uncle. What would you do if it's your brother? Your brothers and your sisters are held captive behind enemy lines. They're being beat, they're being raped, they're being experimented on further behind enemy lines. And our enemy has tricked you, tricked us into thinking that they belong there. That's the best place for them. And I would hear it. Some of them niggas need to just be in there. This is how we talk about our brothers and our sisters. This is the voice that we have for our people. What would you do if it was your brother or your sister? If the brothers had that thought, Asada would have still been behind bars. No. They went to get her. They didn't leave her. So on this day, we honor on August 7, Jonathan Jackson entered a courtroom in San Rafael, California, and attempted to free three black convicts, one of whom was on trial for assaulting a guard. He armed the convicts and took five hostages, including the assistant district attorney and the judge still dressed in his robe. He died a few minutes later in a hell of bullets inside a rented van that was being used for the getaway. We're taking over. We're taking over. That was his battle cry. At 17, Jonathan had already came to the conclusion that the only way he could affirm his sense of justice was at the point of a gun. We waiting on some fucking legislation. We waiting on some stimulus.
the devastation of our people should stimulate you to the point of action. That's the only stimuli you should be responding to. Seventeen Jonathan had already come to the conclusion that the only way he could affirm his sense of justice was at the point of a gun. His experience of life in America had convinced him that the only way he could be heard was by an act of suicidal daring. No regard for his life or his safety. How many young Jonathans we got running around? Brothers and sisters. With that same kind of suicidal daring as his brother writes. Where's the guidance for them? Where's the protection for them? Where's the training for them? You can take our pictures. We are the revolutionaries. We are the revolutionaries. We. We. Not they. We. There's no day for us. They are our enemies. We are the revolutionaries. So that we that we're discussing suggests a collective that is committed for the retribution of African people. Not for a more comfortable space amongst these fucking devils. With these words, he announced to the world that he was not a criminal because he no longer recognized the legitimacy of white law. When the fuck are we going to get back to that point? How he get it at 17 and you 65 and you ain't got that shit? Your rallying cry is voting. And singing and dancing. Revolutionary apostates. Apostates An apostate Is someone Who believed in something And now no longer believes in it Turns their back Abandons it So these apostates That exist That are still amongst us that we love so goddamn much, that we fall out for in droves to go see these fucking apostates, these fucking imposters, these counter retributionists who are doing the job, the dirty work, of the white families that send them are still out here amongst us. How did Jonathan get it at 17? Because Jonathan got it at 17, they were coming to get our youth at 17 years of age for the military.
They were coming with that 1A for our young brothers in this season, right after high school, sending them to Vietnam while killing them in Watts. While killing them in Georgia, in Mississippi, in the Carolinas, in New York, in New Jersey. Killing them at home and abroad. Yet recruiting them involuntarily to fight in a war. While fighting in a war. With these words, he announced to the world that he was not a criminal, that he was not a criminal, that he was not a criminal because he no longer recognized the legitimacy of white law. This is the symbol right here. To take this devil bastard out of the courtroom with his fucking robe on. Your law is no longer legitimate. How the fuck did we let this go to sleep? When his sister heard the news of his death, she cried out. But he was only a boy. Her mother corrected her. Don't say that. He was a man. They killed his father a long time ago. Jonathan wasn't going to let that happen to him. He was going to live like a man. You hear Queen Mother Georgia speaking about her son. This bold, beautiful, fearless queen mother, Georgia Jackson, speaking about her son. He was a man. He was a man who had to grow up without a father. His father was killed. And the brother who was responsible, who was his father figure in his father's place, George, was in prison. Do we understand these dynamics that exist? George wasn't going to let that happen to him. He was going to live like a man. We're the African men amongst us who are more than men entitled. How the fuck can you live like a man and allow these things to happen to your women and children and call yourself a fucking man? After his death, George wrote a letter. I haven't shed one tear. I am too proud for that. A beautiful, beautiful man child with a submachine gun. He knew how to be with people. I love Jonathan, but his death only sharpens my fighting spirit. The murder of his brother didn't put him in a space of depression. It put him in a space of motivation. I am proud just to have known that he was flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. In the news conference three days later, he said, I love that boy. 
I was the first to stand him up in his crib. Not a crib, really. All we had was a box. I taught him how to walk. I wanted to teach him how to fly. I think of him now as I think of Che Guevara. Look at the responsibility of a brother to a younger brother. A father and son where there was no father. George Jackson's last book, Blood in My Eyes, speaks with the voice of the dead. Not only the dead George Jackson and his brother Jonathan, but the living dead in all of the jails and ghettos in this country. Our brothers and sisters of the living dead. The living dead. Those who are alive. The, the spirit animates the body. But are dead. Numb. Cut off. Not in existence. In all of the jails and ghettos of this country. imprisoned, forgotten about, left for dead. It speaks with the voices of the men who already given themselves up for dead and who have nothing left to give except a death for the people. We will make the revolution. Nothing can stop us. We are not intimidated by the specter of repression. We're already repressed. The Black Legion and their terror leaves us cold, unafraid. We will meet it with a counter terror. We'll never Never allow ourselves to be immobilized by a tactic that usually, excuse me, that actually works better for us. The lynch murder of a friend, it makes me angry, not afraid. I'm the next man that must be lynched. My forefather trembled when his brother was lynched, but my brother's immolation means war to the death, war to the utmost, war to the knife. Where are these minds that still exist, that are ready to go all in? Violence is not supposed to work in America for no one that is except the omnipotent administrator, but this has yet to be proved to my satisfaction since I know that a bomb 
is a bomb, is a bomb. It twists steel, shatters concrete, and dismembers men everywhere else in the world. Why not those made in America? A bullet fired from an assault rifle in the hands of a Vietnamese liberation fighter will kill a pig in Vietnam. Why won't it kill a pig in the place where pigs are made? Question. Why won't it kill a pig in a place where pigs are made? Counterterrorism is a facet of urban people's guerrilla warfare. This is our logical response to the repressive measures taken by the enemy state to contain us in the early stages of the rebellion. Our military cadre involved in this activity has a tactical advantage over the establishment's terrorists. Only if we remain clandestine. While working at the direction of a political front, we must remain separate from it. The ranks of these early soldiers must absolutely must be absolutely impervious to infiltration. Precautions must be made to keep this cadre impenetrable to police spies and less committed comrades. Look at that shit. While working at the direction of a political front, we must remain separate from it. We can't be at the rallies. We can't be at the fucking protests. We can't be out handing out fans and fucking food and fucking blankets and all that shit and do this work at the same time. So all these folks that's politicized and organized around this particular information, understand what the fuck George is saying. You have a job. This is your job. This is what you do. This is all the fuck you do. You can't do every fucking thing. I don't see no fans. Or no free lunch in his hand. I see those tools of destruction in his hands. Those tools of justice in his hand. I don't see no fucking picket sign in his hand. If this is you. And you're committed to this. This. It's what you were supposed to do. Nothing else. The ranks of these early soldiers must be absolutely impervious to infiltration. Why? Why is that important? Precautions must be made to keep this cadre impenetrable to police spies. Police spies. Because y'all love the police. We call the fucking police. You got the police in, or in your organization. You're sitting with police and ex police. These are your friends and your brothers. Police spies and less committed comrades. Your level of commitment can make you an enemy to this African retributionary liberation mission. Less committed. That's all it takes. Dissatisfaction. That's all it takes. All it takes for devil to be made is dissatisfaction.
I'm going to read one of Jonathan's reports, and I'm out of here. We'll be live 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as we are every Warrior Wednesday for the Black Survival Die Clap, led by a five-star general. Up to Khalid Muhammad Militia, my warrior comrade, General King Samir Shabazz. So tune in tonight at 7. This is just a prelude. Let's get into Jonathan's. One of his reports, I find it impossible to trust comrades, not after all this. So he found it impossible to trust comrades, not after all this. They say Gloves Davis, a black pig, killed Fred Hampton while he was asleep. I certainly don't have to mention all the so-called defectors who are now appearing before the government committees testifying for the state. They were infiltrators to begin with. The house niggas who ran to the high sheriff as soon as someone whispered, revolt. I think I hate them worse than I hate the sheriff or the owner. I'm just a young slave, you say, trying to understand the scope of my environment. I know personalities have no place in revolution, but every time I think of Davis, just be simple, Karenga, and the rest of these murderous turncoat idiots, my trigger finger, fairly itches. <laughs> mm. Non-persons like Karenga, Leroy Jones, and the other right-wing blacks are intelligent enough to know what they're doing. We cannot excuse them with the ease that we can excuse the average brother who has had no opportunity or inclination to search. The mantle of ignorance does not cover their behavior. They have to know that when they attack socialism, the communist ideal and revolution, that they are not logically or illogically dependent, attacking all whites, etc. They know that Ho Chi Minh isn't white, Chairman Mao or Nkrumah, Lumumba or Torre. They know that there is, isn't but one fight going on across the planet the one between imperialist forces of capitalism and its victims. That's for you black capitalists out there. They know that it's for work that we were kidnapped. What else do you feed a slave for? These black, 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 black men, if you can swallow their shallow shit, have had time to study. Some have traveled. They know it was capitalist agricultural economics that first caused our pain. And that the only change since then is the decline of the agricultural elite and the rise of the modern bourgeoisie a sweatshop displaced the plantation, could have escaped 
then notice that all the African states that really liberated themselves booted out the foreign businessmen and are now socialist states. I'll make an example of Gloves Davis. Even if I have to hobo to Chicago and find him strung up to a street light by his heels with our sign burned in his forehead. I'll just leave it right there. I'll just leave it right there. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'll leave it right there. So let's remember imperfection. Our warrior ancestor, Jonathan Jackson. The man child of African retributionaries. Tune in tonight for the Survivor Die class right here on the Knowledge Radio, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In the spirit of African retributionary hood, in the spirit of African liberation in the spirit of global African supremacy. We honor our warrior, Jonathan Jackson. Black people need to unite. We need to get together as soon as possible. We're being smoked and killed by these pigs every single day. Driving while black, walking while black, breathing while black. They gun us down in the street. Uh, fresh boots for the new recruits. I raise an arm and a salute as I address the troops. They say black riders is extreme. That's how we gotta move. And tell the truth, we've been betrayed, so now we suck a proof. Niggas hating cause we do it like no other do. They throwing shade, we still shining like the month of June. Let these suckers speculate while we keep making moves. We pace across the nation's out power state. The number twos bring terror to the state. Cause we propagating in the booth. Hasmatic with the flow and spreading like the flu. We military campaign on the track. Most of niggas in the game seeking fame and they raps. Guess the grain breaks psychological change with these facts. Seeking move on these haters. Launch a counter attack. On the lessons from the past. So we sticking with the jab. Keep these suckers at it. This is why we got to keep the tabs. We must pick up the gun and aim it in the right direction. For far too long, we as black people have been tricked, bamboozled, and manipulated by the evil racist demons who run this country, who run the United States of America. These demons have caused massacres and mass amount of slavery. Back in the days on the plantation, the most rebellious leader will be drugged in front of the plantation. All the slaves will be brought out the hut. We as black people have been bust upside the head, drugged from Africa, and forced in chains to pick cotton for these bust ass demons. It's time for us to get together and unite. This rap is revolutionary. African propaganda scattered throughout the entire planet. Communication device like antennas and satellites. Every time I grab the mic and recite what I write, it's like lyrical spirituals of enslaved ancestors round the camp. Fire plot and how to defeat the oppressor. We you with the root of the revolution. We need wealthy distribution to control our institutions. We ruthless, rebellious warriors, black riders, the spirit of Tupac is inside. Us, it's thug life. I represent the resurrection, the insurrection. It's time to criticize the unjust with the weapon. He 
will be brutally assassinated for rebellious activity in order to instill fear to our people for far too long, generation after generation. We have been instilled with this fear. We have been instilled with this cowardice. Now it's time for us to stand up and get together. The rebels is black power every hour. We represent the black rock, which is the new generation black Panther party for self-defense. We recognize the old generation, the old black Quintel Pro and Jake Gay and Hoover. He pushed in the crack cocaine at you and everybody smoking dope. Now we recognize what's going on. Now we see that you manipulated us and pumped guns into our community. They smuggled these things into the black community to confuse us, to trick us, and to bang on each other. Now we aware, we are conscious. We recreated the Black Panther Party because it was a need to retaliate on the evil demons. On this mic, you gonna hear the day. Like this, yo. I'm an African. I'm a, I'm an African. I'm an African. I'm a, I'm an African. Yeah, y'all like that? No more. This man's mind is open. I'm an African. I'm a, I'm an African. I'm an African. I'm a, I'm a. Let's get back to the beauty of the world by recognizing the common enemy.